And um, it's that time. I'm going to give everybody a few minutes because I'm, of course, late, as always. Um, <laughs> so um, I am going to talk. Last time I was with you guys, I talked about how to keep your resolutions going in case you we're starting to feel like you're falling off the bandwagon. However, although I didn't really make a true resolution this year, I did make one and I did not even keep it for six hours into <laughs> the new year. So what happens when you make the wrong resolution? Something that's just not going to like work for your lifestyle. Um, as we all know, I'm very opinionated. And so one of the things is that I, I had resolved to be less bitchy, per se, about things. That didn't last. Um, I honestly would need an entire personality transplant, and I don't have that kind of energy. So <laughs> what happens when you make the wrong resolution? Well, thankfully... I'm, uh, I was raised Catholic, so whether you're Catholic or not, uh, right now is a great time to start over with something more realistic. So um, it, for those who are not Catholic, this is, and I have no idea about other religions because I literally went to Catholic school from like four years old through college. Um, I'm non-practicing for many reasons, but Anyway, this is the Lenten season and Catholics to double down on their Catholic guilt, um, give something up generally for 40 days. And they don't eat meat on Fridays, which I still am not clear on why. Um, so, but one of the things for Lent that I did instead of giving something up once I was an adult-ish, um, because it's still... It's like a nice little like spring challenge, like get your bikini bod back in 30 days. Um, instead of giving something up, because it used to be like candy during Lent or video games or whatever it was when I was a child that my parents and my grandma were like, you're going to give this up. And I was like, that sounds great. Like chocolate or soda, whatever. Um those things are kind of meaningless, right? In the grand scheme of life, because anybody could not eat a candy bar for 30 days. Um, so instead, I, as I got older and wiser in my youth, you know, because you know everything by 22 and then you forget everything by 40, um, I started doing something nice per day, something like altruistic as small as holding the door open for somebody or getting something off of a higher shelf for like a short person, you know, some kind of like pay it forward thing. And as I got more independent and with a job and stuff, I would actually do that, like pay for somebody's coffee or like leave a $5 bill on somebody's windshield. Um, so <laughs> If you feel like you've made the wrong resolution and it's just not going to happen because I am never not going to be bitchy about things because I have an opinion and I'm not afraid to express it. And that gets me in trouble a lot, but whatever. I am who I am and I accept myself fully. And, um, and if you don't accept yourself fully and know that part of your like perceived flaws are just general like parts of you that maybe you need to work through because they make you uncomfortable. Maybe you don't because they don't make you uncomfortable, but they make other people uncomfortable. That's fine. Bright lights hurt everybody's eyes, guys. It's just a fact. So <laughs> if you made the wrong resolution, like I did, now is a great time to start a new one. Um, for my Lenten season, um, or we're going to call it Helen's spring spruce up of resolutions. 
um, for all of us non-religious people or like just spiritual people. I am doing better self-care because A, I'm tired of people being like, you need to take care of yourself. What does taking care of yourself look like? I show up, I have my teeth brushed. I have a full face of makeup on. Like, bless his heart. Um, he said this in a very loving way. Um, but somebody was like, I don't want to see you pushing a cart down a street. And I <laughs> was like, I don't even know how I would get to that point. Um, because that, A, like, says that I'm homeless and that nobody cares about me. Um, you know, because, or, or that I'd have a drug problem. Or, like, a real mental break. Um, so for, for, you know, everyone's reference, um, I don't have depression. I don't, I mean, I have had depressive episodes in the past. I have anxiety and that's completely different. You do not need to have major depressive disorder to have anxiety. Anxiety is the way that we either perceive the world. So like social anxiety, I'm worried about everyone talking about me and how others perceive me. Um, internalized anxiety, which can be phobias or OCD, um, where we have to do, we have a compulsive thought process. Um, you can have anxiety in your, everyone experiences some level of anxiety, but clinical anxiety that is, it's a thought pattern that is obsessive and generally um, negative self-talk so like a lot of negative self-talk is anxiety right um we're not doing well enough people don't like us things like that so i am a self negative talker i could have done better i should have done better um no one res i don't have other people's respect because i am not as good as i should be um, so it's like imposter syndrome, things like that. Uh, as, and I've had it my entire life. I had terrible, horrible social anxiety, if you guys can imagine it, because a lot of people are like, you're so nice, or you talk a lot, or you talk to everyone, or you know everyone. Um, I used to vomit in the backseat of, like, I'd have to, like, have my mom pull over to vomit, because going out on a Friday night, um, I was in, like, youth camps, not, like, youth camps like YMCA, like Friday night, teen night was like where my mom was like, you need to go out and make friends. Um, so I used to get, make myself sick with like having to go out into a crowd of people and, and make friends. Um, so I've come a long way, but anyway, so the point is um, I don't have, and I'm not ma major depressive, um, depressive disorder is like what major depression. Um, is a very serious thing. And if you um, have suicidal or dark thoughts or feel very apathetic about your life and aren't enjoying things and you you feel like you're a shell or you can't relate to people um, and you're not seeking help, please do. Um, there's many, many free and um, community-ran resources for you. So that's my little PSA there. But anyway... Um, Generally speaking, because I did do homeless outreach in college, the people that are pushing carts down the street have a major depressive or trauma response disorder. Um, so a lot of veterans are on the streets because they don't get the help that they need. Um, our VA hospitals are critically underfunded, um, especially when it comes to mental health um, and, you know, the transitioning from military life to civilian life. Um, drug problems, which is a lot of times self-medicating for major depressive disorders or psychosis. Um, so all those kinds of things, but um, homeless people are actually like one of my like community things um, because it's, it's really sad and it's really, really difficult to get from that because there's such a stigmata around it to back into your family, back into a house, back into integrated into society because it's almost impossible to get a job without an address and if you don't have a permanent address like employers like why don't you have a permanent address oh well i live in my car or i live on the street or i stay at the shelter um because homelessness in america it like you can see it in california 
this is like way off topic from what I was starting with. But anyway, it just really like, I was like, I am never going to be that person because that is not one of my core tenets of personality. Um, I would never, ever end up on the street pushing a cart because I am at my core resilient and a survivor. Um, but anyway, so if you guys are, um, and, and I know I'm probably people are like, eh, homeless people. Um, I just, it's like one of my, like, there's no reason in America that we have homeless people or like all those homeless people in California, um, which I know people from California are like, ah, the homeless and they're living in their cars, but that's what homelessness in America looks like is living in your car. So like you can be a functionally homeless person. You can have a PO box, live in your car, shower at your gym, and go to your nine to five office. Housing costs in America are insane. The end. And if you have major depressive disorder, um, please seek help. Okay. I am back to our regular schedule program. Anyway, so that really struck a chord. But um, so I feel like he was the like fourth person though that said something to me about taking care of myself that week. Um, so coming back to our actual topic. And um, I do take care of myself. I know people don't see me as somebody who rests or stops or um, and I can see like why they would think that I don't take care of myself. Um, am I exercising or eating right? No, I'm a dog groomer. I'm tired at the end of the day. And although running is something that I truly enjoy, I physically cannot run right now. I have a major injury in my hip and my ankle and I am seeking this year to get those things taken care of because I upped my, my health insurance because God bless, I have a corporate job. Um, and that's, you know, major for groomers as we all know. So anyway, um, I will not be pushing a cart down the street. Everyone who is worried about me, I just have anxiety. It's completely different. I mean, anxiety could lead to major depressive disorder, but it's not going to for me. I would have been there already. Um, so anyway, but this year, so um, because so many of your people are concerned about me, I am, yes, taking care of myself. I started acupuncture on Tuesday, on Fat Tuesday, um, so it counts, and it actually is really working. I can, yeah, all right, right? I could not do this with my shoulders before without, like, having a major fucking, like, electric, and actually it's starting to hurt. I'm going to stop now. Um, but it really helped. So I had asked a bunch of people online, like, oh, you know, what do you think? Like, I'm going to, I'm going to give it a whirl. It didn't matter. If everybody was like, it doesn't work. And it's witchcraft. I have witch bells on my door. It's fine guys. Um, so, <laughs> but it, it, it helped. Like I have tennis elbow. Like I couldn't card my dogs hardly. It really hurt to like brush and card and dry. And like my elbow feels like better. I'm not going to say a hundred percent my shoulder feels better. My hip still fucking hurts. It hurts so bad. Sorry, this is not a safe for work podcast. Um, so I, um, but I am taking care of myself and that was actually kind of like sub resolution B, um, for me because I felt like my bad attitude about things was probably like something that was holding me back. Um, but I reflected and meditated on it and I said, I'm going to let go of all of the things that are holding me back this year. And then that was a Sunday night and Monday morning stuff happened. And then all these good things came my way. And I was like, see, it wasn't my attitude. It wasn't, um, cause I saw that attitude that did not leave me. Uh, <laughs> But I'm doing acupuncture. I was getting massages um, twice a month. Um, I watch a lot of, I don't watch a lot of TV. Um, I've been laying on my couch watching TV though, which doesn't seem like self-care, but for somebody who would normally be standing down her steps, that's a major step. Um, going outside, getting some fresh air. So I do take care of myself, maybe not as well as other people take care of themselves. I am never going to get my nails done, probably hardly ever, because I can't keep up on it. Um, but I do get a housekeeper, so I do, you know, that's my ba major self-care is I like a clean house. I don't ever 
I hate dust. It drives me bananas. Um, I just like my house orderly and clean. And so every two weeks, I come home to a beautifully clean house, and it's fabulous. And that's my favorite day of the month. So, um, so even if your resolution's not working out, make a new one is really my point. Um, so my resolution is to be able to run by the end of these 40 days. I'm going to a new personal care physician on Friday. Um, hopefully they refer me out to an orthopedist or a physical therapist for my hip because it's getting bad. Um, I'm not entirely convinced that it's not actually for my SI joint, which if you don't know or haven't heard this story um, or seen me try to display this um, in public because I think it's hilarious. Um, I can't twerk because I have a transitional vertebrae that is sacralized. So it is fused to my sacrum and your sacrum is that back part of your pelvis and it's supposed to go like this and that's how people can like twerk and I can't because it's fused and I basically have a tail. Um, not externally, just internally. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but it's really funny because I can shake it side to side. I can't do that up and down because my pelvis just doesn't move that way. So I'm not completely convinced that it's actually pain from my hip. I think it's more from that. And um, I have some arthritis from my car accident and from that um, transitional vertebrae because it just, you know, arthritis is something that people get. And I've had it that um, I had a diagnosis of arthritis in that kind of area since I was like, when did I have this accident? Eight years. So like 30, like 29, 30-ish. So, um, you know, don't think that, oh my God, arthritis is like an old lady disease. Literally anyone can have arthritis at any time, um, especially if you have injuries, impact injuries. But so, um, yeah. Some good 40-day um, resolutions are still, you know, giving up sweets or alcohol if you feel that those are issues for you. If you're addicted to sugar, um, the whole 30 is terrible to do, but people have had great success on it. Um, I tried it for like two and a half weeks and I um, didn't feel any better and I didn't lose any weight and I was like, this is crap and I'm going to eat my stuff again. Um, but I do occasionally think about trying it again. I just hate vegetables. I mean, I don't hate vegetables. I just can't have the vegetables I like because they make me sick. Um, but yeah, so like think of things that you can do if you are um, chronically disorganized. It's easy to put things away for 30 days. And, I, um, and why I bring this up is I have um thinning hair which is probably genetic but i will fight against it for the rest of my life or until i don't care anymore and have a lot of spare money for really nice wigs um so my boyfriend is not a put away -er. and i was frantically looking for my shampoo because i'm out and Amazon said it was delivered on Thursday. And I was like, okay, great. I won't have to wash my hair with like, I was using, not that it's bad, dog shampoo. But, um, you know, I can use this like nioxin is what I'm using to grow my hair back. It's working along with the Taro um, Energizing Elixir number four. If you haven't tried it yet, um, Shannon Toops has a code for 20% off your first order. Little plug there. Um I haven't used it on dogs, but I've used it on me. And like this has grown back and these little like over my temple. So now my sparkle strands are really, really bright, but like I was very thin. Um, so anyway, if you're not, a, if you're chronically disorganized um, in like clutter or whatever, and that's something that bothers you, or you feel like that could be something that would make a positive impact on my life if I changed it, because that's really what resolutions are about, right? Is making a positive impact on our lives. 
Um, excuse me one second. My dog is barking downstairs. I'm just going to yell at the window for him. Capel! Stop it! Capel! Hey! Leave that cat alone. He's running all the way to the yard. I'm back. Uh, we have a feral cat that lives outside. Um, not, I don't have an outdoor cat, just to be clear. So not everybody comes and attacks me. He just, my yard is part of his territory. He's a big fat ginger cat. I've named him Fred. Um, I don't feed him. He feeds himself. And I don't have any mice in my house. So I'm happy and he's alive and safe. As far as I know. I mean, he did just walk across the log in my backyard. So... Anyway, um, Joe's not, Joe doesn't put things away, which will, I told him this morning on the phone, I'm like, when we go to couples counseling, the counselor is going to tell you that you're, you're lucky you haven't been murdered yet for this. Um, but I'm looking for my shampoo because FedEx says it's delivered on Thursday, but like Amazon's tracking said it was like in Newburgh, New York. So I'm like, is it here? Or is it not? I call him. He doesn't answer, obviously. Um, and then I was, like, getting my slippers. And I saw it on the shoe rack, which is not where a package belongs. And uh, so I texted him, and I was like, never mind. I found it, meaning don't call me back. So then he calls me back, and I'm like, he's like, what do, what's up? And I was like, oh, God, I'm just looking for my shampoo. I'm like, please stop doing this. Like, please. It makes me insane. Um, so if you are like my boyfriend, Joe, maybe for the next, I guess we're like seven ish days, Tuesday will be seven days. So we're five days in. So for the next 35 days, maybe you take something like a pen and you put it away instead of putting it on your desk. Like I do up here on my desk where it affects absolutely no one but me. Um, and then you can have a lovely cup of fancy pens. Okay, we got some unicorns up in there. We got a mermaid tail. If you, if the clutter doesn't bother you, don't do it. And so that's my point. Resolutions should be about something that is going to make your life better if you change. I am a chronically late person. I'm always late, as you all know. And um, although it would probably make my life better to be on time, I am not necessarily like let me to work on that because I'm also old and set in my ways and I'm not a morning person and eventually I'm going to retire and then I'm never going to have to leave my house before 10 a.m which is my preference um but you know if it really started negatively affecting my life I would probably maybe make an effort to change I can't say that I would I have legitimately tried in the past to make a change and all of my clocks at my house are 10 minutes fast but I think I know that they're 10 minutes fast, so it doesn't affect me anymore. But I've tried. I, I've made small efforts to be more on time, but I just, I just can't. Um, I mean, I can't. I can. I could. But I won't work on it seriously enough to fix myself. And that's really where our resolutions need to come in. We need to make it something that is easy to do. And... Um, something that we want to do that we know will give us a more positive outlook on life. So me being less bitchy about things wasn't actually going to make my life better. It was going to make other people's lives better because they wouldn't have to hear about my opinions on things. However, it would have just eaten me up inside because I would have just told Joe all of my bitchy opinions and he would have just stared at me blankly. So really, I was just robbing myself of joy. And like internalizing my thoughts. So anyway, that's my point though. Um, 35 days. So if you made an impossible resolution that you actually didn't really want to keep like I did, now's the time to make a new one. Give something up for Lent if you're Catholic. Or do something different. If You know, adding something positive to your day. Like I'm going to walk three times this week. And if you're not Catholic, do it for uh, spring. 
New season, new season, new you. There we go. It's almost there, guys. I understand that it's not like for a while still, but no time like the present. So I guess that on that note, I'm gonna wrap up. Um, I am going to have some exciting news after Tacoma. Um, because I cannot tax myself before then. Um, but there's some big things coming out on my horizon. Very excited. I'll see you guys all at groomed. I'll be mostly in the ring, and when I'm not, I will be at the uh pedigree booth for mostly. Um, and then uh, Tacoma, which I wasn't going to go to, and now I'm going to, so that's exciting. So anyway, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. And uh, I am going to get out of here and um, go work on some dogs. Yeah, my dogs. Bye, guys.